Snes drunk. A few years ago, when finishing up A Link Between Worlds on 3DS, I came up with an idea for a video, since Link Between Worlds is kind of a reimagining of Link to the Past with some extra quirks, I thought it would be neat to compile a list of games that deserve modern sequels or outright remakes. Now, some franchises have tried this, most infamously the Ninja Turtles series with Reshelled, and uh, that didn't go too well. Turtles in Time is one of those games that simply did not need any kind of remake, it's fine as it is. Or even games that could use a remake, like Secret of Mana, they ended up whiffing on the visual style, and the gameplay remains buggy as hell. But with these games I'm listing here, many of them were simply too far ahead of their time, and could use a remake or a sequel to retool a few things in order to make the game more approachable and player-friendly for more people. One of the best examples of this is Seventh Saga. This game has so many great ideas, where you set out on a quest looking for gems that give you special powers, but you're competing with six other computer AI-controlled characters that are independently leveling up their stats just as you are. It's really cool, and a tough challenge, but the game is incredibly unbalanced. Yeah, I know the Japanese version does a better job with the balancing, but I still think it could be done better. I know the easy and obvious path to go with a game like this today would be to make it an MMORPG, with each playthrough having having seven players at a time, and yeah, that'd be neat I guess, but I'd rather the game stay as a single player game, just with a visual upgrade, a re-recorded soundtrack, and a complete rebalancing beyond what the Japanese edition offered, you know, so Valsu isn't freaking unkillable. The point is, I think Seventh Saga would really go over well today if it got the modern treatment. The same could be said for Metal Marines. This is another game that simply needs rebalancing. It's a great idea, a tactical strategy game with a similar interface and visual style to SimCity, and there's a certain simplicity to the gameplay once you figure it out. It doesn't get bogged down in details, you just have to protect your three bases and make sure you're generating enough money to stay afloat. Unfortunately, this game hits a brick wall because at a certain point, the computer AI starts out so overpowered that you're more or less forced to quit playing. So yeah, this is another one that just needs a better difficulty balancing, and what would be even better is if the game had a two-player versus mode in split-screen or something along those lines. Metal Marines is a good game, but it would be even better with some modern polish. One game I have not covered on this channel yet is Tecmo's Secret of the Stars, and there are good reasons for that. For one thing, the translation is absolutely brutal, and nobody's bothered to make a retranslation patch, like how the Breath of Fire SNES games got them. And I'm guessing nobody's made one yet because this game is incredibly slow and grind-heavy. This is your classic 90s RPG grind fest where the walking speed is slow, the battle speed is slow, it's unbearable. So all I'm asking for with this one is just fix this game! There's enough good ideas here for this one to make it at least be as decent as something like Paladin's Quest. Switching between two different groups is interesting, there's dual magic spells between characters, and the soundtrack is pretty good, so I think this one can be salvaged if anyone cares enough to take the time to do it, whether it be with a modern remake or even just an improvement patch. Sardian is another game with some good ideas. It's a side-scrolling action platformer where you switch between three different mechs at will, with each having their own abilities to get past different parts of the game. They're all balanced pretty well, but the problem here is the game is so slow. This is an early SNES game and it definitely shows, but still, it'd be pretty cool to see a modern remake of something like this. Three mechs, three completely different sets of stats, taking on gigantic bosses that take up the entire screen. So while this may not be the greatest game on Super Nintendo, there's some potential for improvement there. Since people these days are gaga for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think now would be a good opportunity to polish up the old War of the Gems game. Hell, the story is even loosely based on the Infinity Gauntlet storyline that many people are now more recently familiar with. This one plays as a side-scrolling hybrid between a beat-em-up and an action platformer, and the game looks fantastic, the pixel art is spot on, and every character looks great. But the level design just totally falls flat, and it doesn't fit any of the character's strengths or abilities. And I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but this game is slow. So yeah, just tweak some of the levels, or in some cases just get rid of them like that ridiculous underwater level, and speed up the gameplay a bit and make it a little less monotonous, and this one would definitely be received well. Hell, you could even do the same thing with Super Nintendo's DC fighting game, Justice League Task Force. Yeah, many people aren't that high on the latest DC movies other than Wonder Woman, but still, this is a perfectly good Street Fighter clone that could totally be re-released today with some modern touches. 
Okay, I admit there's barely anything originally about this fighter. It totally coasts on the novelty of playing as Superman or Batman or Aquaman. Whoa, check out that mullet. Is that a buffed out Michael Bolton? Anyway, this could potentially function as a 16-bit alternative to stuff like the Injustice series if it were re-released today, but with a bit of a modern touch. I'll touch on a game I've talked about quite a bit on this channel, Goof Troop. There's nothing about the gameplay or visual style or anything else that I'd upgrade. This is a case where I just want more of this game. I mean, where are the other top-down co-op 16-bit puzzle adventure games? There aren't many others like it, unfortunately. But Goof Troop is great, it's just too dang short. So this is a case where I'd love to see this game remade, just with a lot more levels, while keeping the couch co-op option available. And speaking of couch co-op, it would be freaking great to see Zombies Ate My Neighbors get the modern treatment. Just keep the visual style exactly the same, blow it out to a 16-9 aspect ratio, and make it a roguelike with an endless number of randomly generated levels and bosses. This is one of those games with a very distinct visual style that holds up really well today. Well, except this bro straight from 1993. I know this game has a couple ROM hacks out there, and they're very good, but they're still 4.3 and kind of limited in a way, whereas a modern remake would be able to take advantage of modern TVs, which would be a huge upgrade in a top-down shooter like this. Metal Max is an open-world turn-based RPG with all kinds of vehicle combat and carnage, released all the way back in 1991 in Japan for the Famicom, but a remake was made four years later for the Super Famicom titled Metal Max Returns. However, this is one of those games, kind of like the Romancing Saga series, where it was just too ambitious for its time, and the open-world aspect is still kind of sorta linear in a roundabout way. I'd like to see this one remade nowadays with a real open world. So why this game? Because it takes traditional turn-based combat and uses tanks and modern weapons instead of swords and magic for a nice change of pace. Plus you can bling out your tank with all sorts of stuff, which would only be made better with a more modern touch. I know that Metal Max 2 got a remake for the DS, and that that game does some of what I'm asking, but that game never left Japan, and neither did just about every other Metal Max game with the exception of Metal Saga, which was kind of a disappointment. And this one would be remade as a 16-bit version, and it would be the first in the series. It would make for a great introduction for Western audiences. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.